we never had a woman ask to be in the team. I want to have a pro Rossi skate, Fabiola da Silva. We'll get into the significance of that in a bit. All the stunts are performed by professionals. Do not attempt this yourself. The Hawkeye amongst you would have spotted this bone cream kind of coloured 909 shell in the back of one of John's stories on Instagram, looking like a burrito. With the blade cup on the way, I'm sure this is about to be released, but who is it for? The Basement Boys are the good 2022 and people have been mentioning it, so maybe it's for them. Gav Drum's name is always in the conversation. Or could it be another brain dead skate? Because Carl posted up a picture of this wheel saying more news at the Blade Cup this weekend. Moonshine have announced a pro wheel for K Luz. Edit coming on Saturday night at the Blading Cup. Nice one, good to see more females getting pro products. Or you can drop this power slide combat rocker edit. And it's actually brilliant, man. Really love the fluidity of it, the spot selection. I actually think I might have enjoyed this more than his last aggressive edit. I also appreciate that he's matched his uh, shirt to the skates as well. Soichiro Kanashima is a grand master of rollerblading. Fresh off of dropping Itadaki and Shuri, he's dropped Rumi. The thing is absolutely flawless. I can't get over how good his skating is. As well as being able to win cash this weekend at the Blading Cup, which by the way looks like it's sponsored by absolutely everybody, more sponsors than a racing car driver's jacket, you can also win a pair of them skates by entering the Too Easy Hot Ones Challenge. Too easy. That stuff looks like molten lava. You're gonna need an asbestos gob to get away with this thing. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Have Rosies dropped the ball with their latest release? The reaction's not been wonderful, and according to your votes, it's your least favorite of Bobby's skates. The moon ones were really nice though. And a fair few people were saying they should have given a skate to Fabiola, even though they have no obligation to. Let's have a look into how this has all come about, why it's a great opportunity for Rosies, and why people were asking for a Fabiola skate. The best women's skater in the world. Let's start with a positive. Rossi's have been on a decent run the last five or six months. Nils won the last Blading Cup, one of the biggest events in the calendar. He's come off of that buzzing, thinking, while I'm in the US of A, I'm going to take more of your trophies as well. I'm going to get involved in this carrier open. And he goes and wins that one, doing the double. Two big wins, cash in his pocket, all the vegan lasagna he can eat, and a hero's welcome waiting for him back in Latvia. Nice one. At this point, Rossi's are doing backflips. They cannot believe their luck. The timing is immaculate. Because here's his pro skate. A nod to a classic version of the fifth element skate. Although it kind of looks a little bit like Tupperware after you've had spaghetti in it and it's got stained. I'm into them though and the reception was fairly good as I remember. The edit was phenomenal. Really clean, concise skating, loads of control, some bangers in there as well. Lovely bit of production. The thing was actually like stunning to watch and has now clocked over 108,000 views. The Rossies are like, we've won the league, the FA Cup, the Charity Shield, the meat raffle at the Goat and Tricycle, and it just gets better. Around the same time, they dropped the RL2 liner, an improvement on the first, and again, well received. Portugalia came out, which had some great skating and a really nice vibe to it. But what I think was most important was that the whole team were together. Well, the majority of the team. Because one thing I think Rossi suffer from is a lack of cohesion. Everything feels very disjointed and they kind of, they don't really feel like a team. So this went some way to addressing that. Things were stepping up and the ball just kept rolling. They did a collab with Plastic Pushers, which I personally like. I think that was really cool. I like the way they got the old school logo in there. They announced the new frames, which look great again, well received and look solid in real life. Yuto had an absolute stormer at Winter Clash. He put on a style school and one most creative trick. Rosies are looking around the office going, what year is it, man? Is it 96 or something? We're back on top, like. Also at Winter Clash was the female challenge in rollerblading panel, which was kind of a car crash for Rossi's and the first sign things were veering off track slightly. I'll come back to that in a bit though because it is important. Fresh off Winter Clash, they went on another tour, which is positive and great for the team dynamic. They also got young Yuto and Katie Bedratta involved, which again is another great move, giving them a platform, getting them experience, all going in the right direction. They dropped the lilac and teal, basic M12s, colourful, the classic boot, cheaper price point, only in sizes three to six, but uh, good for those with um, smaller feet. They followed that up with the Juno Team Skate with a really interesting colourway. Lots of people were saying the colourway was like Boba Fett. 
What I think is actually more accurate is Corpse Bride. It looks like skin that lacks oxygenated blood and they put lipstick on it. Looks like a trout going on a night out, but I do like them. I would definitely wear them if they want to send me a pair and I'll do a review for them and stuff like that. Also, I've definitely got no issue with them just like releasing new colorways of the M12 boot. It's a classic boot. It works. It's good. They're just focusing on better materials, which I think is clever, and I think they should just continue down that path. They're also getting involved with the liners and the frames. Now here's where things take a turn. They tease a new skate called Candy, and people start speculating that it's for Fabiola de Silva. Now let's go over why they might have done that. Now Fabiola was sponsored by Rollerblade in the past, but she absolutely loves the Rochers. She's really active on social media. She's always wearing their skates. They've actually been flowing our skates for a while now. There's a video of her unboxing the skates from December 2021, and I suspect they've been flowing her for longer than that because she's always got the skates on. So evidently, she's on their radar. On the 28th of April, 2022, DMAG posted an article, The Bladies Movement, Don't Call It A Comeback, by Devin Babin. They cover icons like Angie Walton, Tasha Hodgson, Fallon Heffern and Guillambo, Jenna Downing, Jenna Logue. They also have Nicole in there, Mary, and of course Fabiola. The article says, it's natural to wonder how a well-known, incredibly skilled female who was on top of the skate world for years and skated park, street, and vert, didn't get a pro model skate. If there was ever a person to help bring new, young people into the sport, especially future ladies, it's Fabiola. When they asked Fabiola why she thought she hadn't received a pro skate, she said, well, to be honest, I don't know. My dream is to have a pro skate. I guess it's every skater's dream. You guys tell me the reason. I truly don't know. That was my best Brazilian accent as well. A large part of the article is these other well-known ladies from within the industry going, why didn't she ever get a pro skate? It doesn't make sense. Like, she should get a pro skate. Jenny Logue even says it's the most obvious pro model that never was. Fabiola then goes on to say, I want to have a pro Rossi skate, and I think it's still possible. I've been skating for 30 years. I'm 42 years old. I'm very athletic. Nothing has changed for me. I still travel doing speeches, and for the past five years, I've been teaching kids and adults how to skate. I really believe the sport can transform lives. Now, that's not Rossi's fault. Roller Blade could have gave her a skate, but they didn't. But you do get a glimpse of how she's viewed within the industry by other bladies, like her status, and also a very clear indication of her own desires. Now it's worth noting, Martina, Rosie's team manager, is a picture in the article and gets mentioned a couple of times. I'm gonna guess she's read an article about bladies and is aware of the golden opportunity that sits in front of her. The most recognizable female in rollerblading, who has transcended the sport, who was in a computer game, has a figurine and was a stunt double in Brink, who won 50 LG Action Sports medals, eight X Games gold medals, is a certified icon, wears Rosie skates and has asked for a pro skate. If that was me, I'd already be spending the fat bonus check I'd be getting for signing up Fabiola. I am thinking employee of the decade. I'll have a throne please in my room and a red carpet and a lion. Can I have a snow leopard as well, my favourite animal? Ten months later, in February 2023, Winter Clash hosted that panel I mentioned before, Chances and Challenges for Female Pros. Martina was on the panel and questioned about the lack of female representation on the Roche's team. We never had a woman ask to be in the team. That's like the straight up true. Hang on, Belle. I want to have a pro Rossi skate. Her face is a couple of pictures and paragraphs above that. Obviously, I know she can't actually see the thing from the picture, but it's just funny that there's a picture of her, that quote, and then she says that. Martina continued to get called out, and it's relatively uncomfortable to watch, actually, but you get an idea of where this notion has come from now. Surely alarm bells were ringing at Roche's. I'm surprised they didn't get out a Valo flag and give John a call. Please, will you come back, mate? Now, Roche's, like image has been, like, you know, it's not that great. Here is your golden ticket, literally saying, I want to have a pro Rosie skate. Rochers with Conor McGregor confidence. Who the fuck is that guy? Bobby's new signature skate drops. People voted and said they were a miss. Big swing and a miss. Yeah. And also that they like the skates progressively less. I don't think they're the ugliest things in the world. People have compared them to bowling shoes, said they look like those Lonsdale shoes, said they look like moody Adidas trackies, and they looked a little bit cheap, like the budgie. Zach Pollock's setup looks better. People questioned why it wasn't for Fabiola, which I think then got confused to mean like, why is Bobby getting another skate? He's on a pro contract, like, he's meant to get a skate every year. It's not a surprise that he got a skate. 
No problem, Bobby getting his skate. And it's not that he got a skate, it's that Fabiola didn't get a skate. Roshis are frustrating. They're a pillar in the rollerblading community, but I just feel like they missed a huge opportunity. Someone suggested because times are hard for rollerblading that it was a better financial option to go for Bobby rather than a tribute skate. Tribute? She's not dead. Is it better financially? Let's have a look at like the rollerblading landscape. Shima reissue, sold like hotcakes. Apparently sold better than active pros, pro skates. Sold so well, there's a Shima free reissue. And I'm pretty sure that went down well. Randy Spicer got a reissue of his Senate wheels in collaboration with Dead. Shit. Hot. Sold. Feinberg got a skate. Takeshi finally got a skate, which everybody was buzzing about. Nostalgia is massive in rollerblading. What do you think the average age is of rollerbladers? According to my statistics, the average age is 35 to 44. That age group, froth at their mouth and nostalgia. Like, Dad, are we going to jungle gyms today? Mm, no, nah, we can't actually. I just spent another 300 pounds on a, like a nostalgic skate release. Dad, I don't want to have Chris for dinner again. Nah, these are, these are shimmers though. Do you know what? We can squeeze the sweat out of the liner. You can drink that. That'll fill you up. How often do you hear people saying, oh, I've just come back to rollerblading. Yeah, I used to do it in like the 90s, early 2000s, man. They would absolutely lap up that nostalgia, guzzle it down, man. And they definitely know who Fabiola De Silva is. They know her. These didn't sell well, according to the shops that I've spoken to, and they've just dropped a skate which less people like. Ironically, the shell they use for an M12 is decades old, so they can see the value in like sticking with a classic but they can't currently see the value in going with an icon. Fabiola has more followers on Instagram than anyone on Rosie's, including Rosie's themselves. She is probably more well known around the world than anybody on that team. Maybe even arguably like anybody that's ever been on that team, like up there with the likes of like Arlo and Julio. She's achieved more than anybody on the current team. It's not like they're gonna win like eight X games or anything, is it? You're telling me that's the risky option. Could be risky, very risky. They gave a pro skate to a lad that's probably more well known outside of rollerblading for doing backflips on office chair wheels than he is for doing stuff on skates. I was buzzing about Iliar getting that pro skate. I was quite vocal about it. <laughs> I got grief for it as well. But I was chuffed when he got that pro skate. But he's got 70,000 less followers than her. What sells out more, the Spice Girls reunion tour or the Cheeky Girls? Mm, cheeky, cheeky. It's not like they don't give signature skates to people who aren't on the pro team as well. Grant Hazelton got a skate and that was amazing. In that panel, Mary talked about how the Bladies community get behind product releases and they sell really well. And that's just the start of it. Did you see how many men were in the comments going, it should have been a Fabiola skate, really want a Fabiola skate? Skating is huge in Brazil, as far as I'm aware. Imagine if one of their icons gets a pro skate and you can get around the import tax. What does she have to do to make them realize that she wants to skate? Get like a big blimp with a message on it, like hide herself inside the cake and like surprise them at the office. Give us a skate. Rosies control the majority of their production. You could just set up a pre-order and only make what you need. It's a missed opportunity for now, but they can still definitely do it in the future. And I really hope they do. I would fully back it. You can have my money now. If I was another brand though, I'd just swoop in, give her a pro model straight away. I know a load of people will mindlessly brand what I say is hate to just try and like shoo it away and try and ignore what's really obvious that like she wants to skate. She's an icon. Nostalgia definitely sells, man. They should be going for it. Like, why would I push for like them to make up what I think is a financially better decision if I didn't like respect the brand? Like, I want them to stay around. Thank you to all the Patreons for your support. I really, really appreciate it. It helps me to keep this thing going. You can join them from as little as three quid a month. There's also the YouTube membership as well. Here's a couple of videos you can watch in the meantime, and I'll see you again soon. Spotty dog.